Hi, I'm Morton Gans Pedersen, and you're watching Rovers Chat. Hello, Rovers Chat. We are here, and we are in the quarterfinals for the first time since 2015. That time, obviously, we lost against Millwall, and hopefully, we get another place in the semi final and a first time at Wembley because we have beaten Leicester City two goals to one. And usually, I do these records by myself or Dan does them by themselves, but I thought I'd ask the chat because what a win it was. And of course, I'm joined by the two residents that usually review, usually preview the games, uh, Mike and Scott. So firstly, Mike, how are we doing? Oh, wow. <laughs> Just wow. <laughs> That's all I can say at the moment. Beautiful. Be- that's perfectly, perfectly summed up. And, and, and Scott, reflect on the game in one word. Just unreal. <laughs> Obviously, Blackburn came into this game. It was on iPlayer, so most of us watched it from home. Watched it, and, and, and we are so envious of the people who went to the King Power Stadium in itself because it was only a tenor in it, 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 the game. Uh, so this is the team news. Obviously, Ainsley Piers in net, Joe Ranky Costello, Hayden Carter, Dom Hyam, Harry Pickering, Tyler Morton, Lewis Travis, Ryan Hedges, Sammy Smoddix, Tyrese Dolan, and Sam Gallagher. So firstly, Mike. What do you make of this team news in itself? Was there any surprises in this team? Not really. I was I was really happy with the with it. I mean, I'm looking at the team now. I didn't think that there was there was any shocks there. I think we can all say that that is probably the strongest team we could have put out there. Yeah, absolutely, Scott. And any 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 thoughts on this team news? You know, see. When I uh, saw the team news, I actually said it, it's stronger than I thought we were going to go. Um, I thought we would play. I thought we would start with Ash Phillips, but you know, we we. Uh, I think it's it's a breath of fresh air, really, isn't it? That we've we, we're going for it. We really want to have a cup run. Like Rovers have just for so many years not really bothered about the cups, just focused on the league positions, which fine it. I'm fine with that, but it's nice to be able to say that we care about the cup and that we can succeed in both the cup and the league. And I think, you know, if anyone's going to get us to Wembley one way or another, it's going to be uh, JDT. I was just trying to quickly find out how many shots we had against Leicester in this game because it seemed like every minute I looked up from the screen... We did, had a different a different chance every each and every time. I think we had more XG in this game than any of the any of the games in the league so far. First off, obviously, we go one 0 up uh, with a Tyree stolen sh- uh, goal, but obviously you missed the sitter just before. And uh, Mike, obviously, we've seen this before. Tyree stolen, obviously scores, but how many guilt and L- edge chances do we miss? And did you think throughout the game when they scored the goal as well? It, this is this is typical Blackburn. Well, I think Dan tweeted, didn't he, saying Rovers, please don't do this to us when yeah. they went two one up. And it was, I think, it was the thoughts of all of them. So, <laughs> I mean, I've got I've got the stats here. I, I mean, they don't tell the story. I mean, it said we had fourteen shots, six on target, but they had twenty two shots, five on target. But you have got to remember, wow. I mean, we we dominated for sixty minutes as far as I was concerned. You know, we looked the better side. But we was missing those chances, like you say. Dolan missed one. Hedges missed a couple. Schmodix missed one. I mean, Schmodix was trying to curl one top bins, you know, throughout <laughs> the whole second half, and it just wasn't really yeah. going for him. I mean, you could see with how he was hyping up the crowd, he he was absolutely on it today, you know. But it says they had sixty three percent possession. I think that is just literally the last thirty <laughs> minutes that Leicester did anything. We absolutely dominated them. Scott, obviously, <laughs> I agree with you. Obviously, Mike, I think that I'm so surprised at the fact that um, they had 22 shots, 63% possession, mm-hmm. because the first 65 minutes, we looked all over them. Um, was there any moment, Scott, where you thought that Blackburn could get, you, you know, Leicester could pip a, a draw or, or come from behind, or were you comfortable throughout the game? <laughs> it's funny you should ask me that. Um, I think it were about. Just, just I think it was about the 60, 60 minute mark. My mum mentioned how, you know, she hadn't felt worried throughout the entire game. You know, 
even every time they went forward during the first half and even the first 10, 15 minutes of the second half, like every time they went forward, you, you just had that belief that our defence could cope with it and that they would they would fight back. And I wasn't worried. And until until she said that and she jinxed it and I told her that. Because um, <laughs> as, soon as, as soon as we got to like the, the last half an hour or so, yeah, when they, when it was just constant attacks and we were really having to dig deep, and I said to her it was all their fault. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but no, it's uh, it's it's one of them. Until the last, until we were really digging deep, and obviously we all know that it it would be a classic move of Rovers to just concede one right at the end and send us into another half an hour. But you know, it's, I think it just shows the development of this really young Rovers side. They really are developing into a team that can really adapt and, and change how they need to play when they need to. So the, the obviously the momentum now with nine unbeaten since the Rotherham game where we lost four nil. I think that uh, the ideals of, of, of Thomason's style, I think the, the way that we play is definitely getting to these players right now. The Not only that, but the the fitness of the players as well. If you're not in the first team, you're in the under-23s, and it really shows that the, the lack of rustiness in each and every player, even if they come in after a few weeks off, look at Travis who's come in, Dolan's not had the, the amount of games, Smodix who's probably the man of the match today. The amount of players that could easily just fit in this squad, and I'm sure there will be others that we can speak about as well. So, Mike, was there a, was there a player today that stood out out of the eleven? So I wanted to mention Pears to start with. I thought his saves right at the start that was yeah. massive. I mean, I think you know we've all we've all seen these early goals going against us, and you just crumble, and that's it. But then saves, I think really made a difference but for me it was Dolan I thought Dolan was amazing I thought yeah. his pace his endeavour yes he missed a bit of a sitter but he did go and get himself a goal and I thought he looked massively dangerous and anyone that hasn't watched us all season maybe watching that and thinking well that been have a player on their hands on that left wing you know so yeah I thought he was amazing and with you know Breverton heading out the door it's just nice and comforting to know that we have a player there that's young that can come in and do a job like that against a very, you know, it was a strong Premier League side that, you know, was playing. It wasn't like they were putting out a youth team. No. So for me, yeah, it was Dolan. I mean, not, you, you said, Dom, about Schmodics. I mean, who, who for you, other than Schmodics and Dolan, you know, was up there for you? I'd probably say I think I think I think Morton for Morton to have the, the game he had alongside Travis, I think them two needed a game that that, that worked for him because for so long it hasn't worked, whether it's Travis with Buckley or Morton with somebody else. Them two playing well together was the perfect night for them. I think in terms of on the ball, off the ball as well, when Ranky Castello came off, there was a massive difference between him and Britain when they came when he came off. Hopefully, and I'm praying that he's not injured because he did come off with a limp and we know what he's like. He's quite injury prone. Um, I was going to ask Scott about Ren Costello, but I'll answer it myself. It, um, it's a worry, isn't it? If, if, he, if he's not, if he, if he comes back and he's not the player what he is right now, you know, he, he, we, we don't know whether he's a foreign player because it's been such a short stint in the squad. Uh, but hopefully, when he comes back, if he's back, and hopefully it's just a niggle, that um, he he will be the player that we know he is, um, not the player that he was, essentially. Um, obviously, Scott, <laughs> hardest task of the night, probably. We've spoke about Raggy Costello, spoke about Smodix, Dolan, is it, and Piers. It, it, anybody else in this team? Because you could mention anybody right now, can't you? You could literally talk about all of them. But mm -hmm. I, I do think, I do think uh, Travis was immense. And uh, I think it's so it's so nice to see him back to playing how his unusual self and yeah. just being straight in there, up for it, getting involved and really getting into those crunching tackles. It, it's back to it's back to 
you know, I think that stint out the t- out the side has really helped him to get back to where he was uh, before all this. And I think it, I think it just shows that you know JDT, he's not afraid to drop a player if they're not performing. But I think sometimes it's the right right way because obviously he's really got that involved um, again and. Uh, I'm really happy to be saying this for once, but I actually think, you know, before Sam Gallagher went off, he was much improved, mm. much improved in his positioning and being in the right places at the right time. I know he did an interview saying that he's been working on those things um, with some of the training staff, um, like looking at his previous matches, seeing where he could have been better positioned for, you know, those tap-ins. And I think, you know, if some of the you know some of the crosses in the first 10, 15 minutes, a bit short, and he, he would have got on the end of them. And I think we could, we've all been saying, I mean, me and Mike have been crying out for for weeks about how he's just not there, and he's like six foot four, and he's he's scored one header this season. And I think it's like when you're six foot four, you want to be scoring more than one header. Oh. Um, and I think I think he's much improved tonight. I think it's a shame that he didn't manage to get on the score sheet. And he got, he did get the assist, didn't he, for the second goal? He's the one yeah, that put it he in. Did. Yes. I know that obviously Schmodick's had a bit of, uh, bit of a battle to get it out of his feet and get it through the defenders, <clears> but it was Gallagher's nice little turn and, yeah. and, and pass, wasn't it? It was, a, it was but almost he, a Travis, Travis-esque uh, mm. slide tackle as well mm. from Gallagher. Yeah, but even even that in itself shows the urgency and the, the resilience of a player to get through and score like that because I think that Leicester probably thought it was going to be an easy night and it, ultimately it wasn't because we lost they lost the game we won the game we threw to the next round so obviously the quarter final the final when you speak about final is it you start to get a bit get a bit scary now don't you mm. um, obviously one game away from Wembley like I always say as well so Scott obviously. T- Tonight, um, I believe that City are still beating Bristol City. I don't know if that's still the case. Uh, Fulham have won. Brighton have won. Tomorrow is, I mean, Southampton versus Grimsby. So you think Southampton. Burnley versus Fleetwood, you think Burnley. And uh, United probably will beat West Ham. And Spurs will probably beat Sheffield United. So I think everybody's looking at Blackburn thinking, we want that fixture. So... Let's flip it on our heads. Scott, who would you like in the next round? Um, who would I like in the next round? Uh, I would quite like Southampton. Um, because I would like to see us go up against Adam Armstrong and see uh, <laughs> see what happens there. Completely forgot about. Si- I used to forget he's there, you know, because of how irrelevant he's been at the times. Uh, Mike, is there any anybody that you want, as in like an away fixture that's good to go to, or do you do you agree with Scott? It'd be boring if I agreed with Scott, even though that was the one I wanted to go for, because obviously they're an out of form team, and I think the way I'm seeing it is we're in the semi final, if you know what I mean. Like our final is going to Wembley, so yeah, yeah, I feel like. The semi-finals in the next round, and this is a huge game for us. <laughs> just to get to Wembley, it'll, it'll just appease us. I was going to say Southampton at home. You know they're out of form. We're in form, but oh, it's a difficult one, isn't it? I mean, it's going to be someone difficult. We're, we're going to be the least favourites in whoever it is, unless Grimsby beat Southampton. You can say Grimsby, yeah. you can say Fleetwood. <laughs> I mean, the dream would be Burnley at home, and we beat them. <laughs> to go to Wembley, so I'm going to go oh, for that. Yeah. I want Burnley at home. Yeah, go and for the scoreline. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I think. Oh god, I, I, to be honest with you, if it's not going to be either of those, let's go to a ground we've never been to. So I'm going to say Tottenham away. That would be a decent ground to go to if we're not. You know, it's it's, it's like a Wembley light essentially. Yeah. It's like a, it's a, and I think they've got a, like a cheese stand there as well in one state. <laughs> so <laughs> let's try and explore that. Uh, but that has been. The review of the Leicester City 1, Blackburn Rovers 2 at the King Power Stadium. It's probably not in terms of technical, tactical analysis, but we're all buzzing and it. it doesn't matter at the end of the day. I'm sure you're all in the comments below saying how, how good of a victory it was because it was an eye play and everyone could watch it. Uh, but thank you guys for being on. Thank you, Mike. 
Cheers, mate. The project continues. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. And thank you, Scott, for being on as well. Oh, it's always good. It's uh, especially when we're winning. Yeah, yeah, it, it, that in itself is is what we need. We've beaten West Ham. We've beaten Leicester. We could beat anyone. Let's. <laughs> we could take anyone. <laughs> City away, especially. Let's do it. Right. So, uh, thank you for for joining us and. Uh, have a have a lovely week. So we will see you all very soon. And cheers, guys.